Welcome back to Squirtastic. Well, uh, we're gonna do Venom, which Ooh. is a two-part level. Wow. Okay. So what are we gonna do here? Venom, the final goal. Andros is hiding on Venom. Fox, you must do a barrel roll. His core brain and destroy it. Nice. I like how underexplained this game is. <laughs> Who is it? Who's Andros? What's the core frame? <laughs> well, I mean, he mentioned Andros in the first level. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, we have to counterattack Andros's army. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Yeah. Next thing I know, I'm... But, you know, it's always kind of fun to just have a game that have a little bit of mystery. That's yeah. something that I can complain about with... Um, as of this recording, the latest Pokemon games were Ultra mm -hmm. Sun and Ultra Moon. Yeah. And I feel there's... Every four steps, there's a cutscene. Right. It's like, am I watching a movie or am I playing a video game? Hmm. Well, some people like that. At the same time, I was playing through Pokemon Crystal version on the Virtual Console, and there's so much, like, you just kind of wander into an area, like the yeah. Ruins of Elf mm. or the yeah, yeah. Uh, National Park. For sure. Nobody stops you. Yeah. Nobody explains <laughs> to you what this is. If you're curious, check it out. Yeah, yeah. If not, move along. And I kind of wish that the game would do that, but no, instead, they stop me, force my hand to take a photo of a Pikachu <laughs> that I get a thousand likes for instantly, and it's like, what, what is this for? I didn't feel anything. Uh -huh. I didn't get curious. It's just like, oh, what an inconvenience. Mm. There's just too much interruption, I guess. Yeah. And same with the Mantine surfing, I just couldn't get into it because I was forced to do it. All right. Like, halfway through it, I put the 3DS down and made a snack, and yeah. then it just kind of beat itself. There you go. A bit, too much, a bit too much hand holding? Way too much. Oh, okay. Way too much. Like, I liked Sun and Moon quite a bit more than Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, because I feel like Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are pretending like they were the very first Pokemon games ever made, and they kind of have to sit down and super explain everything that's going on. Right. And that's fine, sure. Mm -hmm. But I'd like it if there was an option where you can say, like, hey, I've been doing this for 10 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. And then they just kind of allow you to skip that stuff if you're not interested in it. Because, like, I'm sure there are people who love taking pictures of Pikachu. For sure, yeah. And I'm sure there are people who love contests mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I guess just kind of as a boy who's been playing since Gen 1, I'm mostly interested in battles. Yeah. Especially with other real players. Yeah. I'm mostly interested to see what they do with the uh, Switch one that they've been talking about. As of right now, the rumors are floating that it's like Pokemon Go Pikachu and Pokemon Go Eevee. Uh, which I, are supposedly like Kanto remakes? Yeah, I, I heard that it was. Slash sequels? Possibly something in Kanto, but. Which I'd be completely fine with given that we have access to the other Pokemon. Yeah. If it's just the first 150, I'd be like, why? Because hmm. I didn't like that with Fire, Led and, uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green. Right. It's like, even if you had the means to evolve Onyx or Golbat. Yeah. It was restricted. Mm. It just simply wouldn't evolve. I see. Or if you had a, you know, metal coat on your Onyx and you traded it to a game that had a national dex yeah. and it evolved in Steelix, well, guess what? You can't have your Steelix back until yeah, yeah. you've beaten the game. Mm -hmm. And that kind of sucks in case somebody did it by accident. Yeah. I think what I always wanted was like a, like how in Gold and Silver, one of my favorite things was that you could beat the game and then go back through yeah. Kanto again. I always thought it would be cool if they did a, another game like that where you get to go back through a, a previous region or I'm just thinking multiple like, regions. Unless they game. really overhaul Kanto. Kanto's a small region, so I feel yeah. like they kind of are expected to add something. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe they'll do. Now that they seem to like doing the sequels, <laughs> they might do like a... Kanto, however many years after the first game. Yeah, supposedly like uh, the characters red and blue are in it, but they're a bit older. Uh. And you uh, will have a rival, and supposedly you get the options of Pikachu or Eevee. Not yeah. limited to the version, much like red and blue. Charizard's on the box, but you don't have to pick them. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. 
But I, I'm pretty excited about the whole thing, but I'm trying not to get into the whole, like, rumor hype, because there's so yeah, yeah. much garbage. Mm -hmm. Just constantly. Yeah. And it's annoying. <laughs> I pretty much don't believe anything unless it's said by yeah. Cerebi, Bulbapedia, or Nintendo themselves. Yeah, yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. So. I'm sure we'll at least get a teaser sometime soon. Yeah, well, E3's coming up, right? Yeah, exactly. Although Pokemon traditionally doesn't participate in E3. Yeah, I know they were saying that we're definitely getting some Smash Bros. Oh, yeah. So, that'll be cool. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about Smash Bros. I really like an emphasis on story in Smash Bros. As much yeah, as I was, I like, know. dissing story in Pokemon here. Yeah. It's not really the story that I had a problem with in Pokemon. It's the constant interruption. Yeah. Um... Yeah, like the subspace emissary. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. need to be complicated. Exactly. It just needs to be engaging. Yeah, for sure. I definitely missed the story. And it felt like uh, Super Smash Bros. 4 was so lacking yeah. because of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, okay, you got 60 characters, mm -hmm. but so what? I don't care about I think, any of them. I think. Give me a reason to care. Yeah, I think with that one, their intention was to go back to the. and reassess the like combat system the mechanics and yeah i heard it, that they were bringing trying it to back bring it a to, little bit more like melee yeah well and to bring it back to like a tournament level kind of thing so, yeah, and they removed the tournament mode okay. yeah but they, they, <laughs> did, they definitely did a, i think a really good job it's a very clean game it's a very balanced game oh absolutely it's it's a so, great game but i just don't find myself yeah going to it so i think now that they have that engine i think they can. They have a lot more room to yeah. do something like an intense story mode or whatever. And then I think with how well Nintendo's been doing with their DLC, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more like DLC for that game. I think they'll like pre-schedule a lot of it because just because of how well it does. Yeah. So, and I think they want to try. I know, like to, uh, extremists will completely argue the, uh, against this, but I feel like Doctor Mario should be a costume, yeah. not a whole separate character. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I feel like they could even just like, as a costume, still like skin his fireballs into pills and stuff like that. Yeah, pretty yeah. easily. Because why not? They add clothes to character all the time, and I'd like to see that with Sonic the Hedgehog too. Yeah. Like, give him clothes. Yeah. It's not unusual for him to wear clothes. Mm -hmm. Like, if for some reason you have to color him blue, we need more than a bracelet and colored shoes. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's too hard to tell the Sonics apart. Yeah, for sure. Pac-Man's the worst offender. <laughs> yeah. Well. I hope it's okay that we're not, like, talking about Star Fox at all. Yeah. That's <laughs> what it is. Play your games, you chat, have a good time. Bro, can't hang out and play video games. I gotta hang out and play video games. Yeah. So, there's one person I that referred to it as a Lego talk, where you, you, you play a game or you build the Lego or you do whatever and then you just talk about whatever and it doesn't even matter. Yeah. It's just chilling and having a good time. Oh, absolutely. I feel like as long as I kind of keep the banter, then that's fine. Yeah, for sure. Although, it seems like people enjoy it if I get frustrated. <laughs> like, those seem to be the more popular videos of mine. Yeah. But I don't know, I'm too good at this particular version of uh, Star Fox to... Like, I'm not even really thinking about what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just kicking ass. Oh, you've done it enough times. Yeah. Because when I was a kid, I don't know, this was like... A weekend ritual. Yeah. <laughs> At least on this uh, <laughs> this storyline. Yeah, because it's the only one I can beat. Yeah. <laughs> the other ones are such a jump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also remember like being really into video game soundtracks, especially like Star Fox and stuff. I found myself humming it a lot while I was at school and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I remember beating Star Fox. Just to hear the credits music. <laughs> there you go. That's how easy it was. Take down Andros. All ships check in. Ready to bring up the rear fox. Oh my Andrew fox. Probably wing damage. <laughs> Ball in. <laughs> Ball in. So, 
Usually I have like some kind of button delay when I'm recording, but today everything seems to be going really well. It was awesome. Yeah. Like I was even practicing with a different game and I, there was just no delay. Like the freaking stars are aligned or something. I don't know what's going on. There you go. Everything's just working much better than usual. It's destiny. <laughs> Maybe you'll be able to beat one of the other storylines now. Maybe. Like, I, I, <laughs> earlier today, I got to a level I've never seen before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see if I can get to it again. Yeah. But, um, I remember trying so hard to get 100% on every level. Wow. I think the best I've ever done was like 100 on every level except wow. for like one. Well, they got 100%. Well, I, you know, I, I'm doing distracted playing too, right? <laughs> like, if I'm sitting down and really trying yeah. to focus on this, Makes I'm sense. sure I could do pretty damn well. Yeah, it's always harder when you're trying to talk. Yeah. But I'm, I'm also told that I make video games look easy. Yeah. That's just a result of yeah. doing it enough times, right? So. Yeah, I remember a long time ago, we were hanging with our friends, and you guys were watching me play, I think, Sonic Advance. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Purple speaking. <laughs> nice. I remember getting so excited the first time I heard that. I was like, oh! State of the art. It is pretty, like, okay, that was a weird graphical glitch there. Yeah. Like, one of the R wings was graphically in front of it, but zooming. Mm -hmm. You could, like, see it behind the R wing, but it was smaller. Anyway. Uh, what I was saying is, I was playing Sonic Advance, and I think one of our friends commented, This game looks really easy, and he's like, yeah. that's because Neil's playing. Yeah. <laughs> I miss when they used to do this in video games, show off all the enemies, what their names are. Oh, it's just like a, a product of Nintendo at the Super Nintendo time, and yeah. other people were trying to emulate it. Yeah. It was cool, though. Yeah. And what's this one? I, I remember not really know, knowing what to think of these things. Because it's like, oh, atomic base weapon lasers, height 600 by... <laughs> like, yeah. 600 what? Meters? Feet? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, none of this made sense, especially not to eight-year-old Neil. Yeah. I was just like, oh, that one looks kind of creepy. It's like dancing robot spider. Yeah. Has like elastic bands or something. Yeah. Bungee cord. It's kind of a creative. I always like the idea of a spider villain, but yeah. In my comic books, I hate them because drawing something with multiple long legs is very frustrating. Mm. I always liked this boss, Venom. Just the, Venom. Just the like design of it looks really cool. It's yeah. Like, kind of Egyptian. Oh really? Yeah. yeah kind of like I guess a, so. Anubis head or something like that. I, don't I think really it's supposed thought to... of it that way, but yeah, you're right. I think it's supposed to be a snake. Look at those after effects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the laser went through the camera. There you go. You're dead. You're dead, son. <laughs> so I know that Andross looks different depending on which road you take, but I always felt that this was just the dumbest design <laughs> for an end boss. Yeah. Because it feels like they made a face as a tech demo and decided, yeah. hey, that should be the last boss. Quite Maybe possible. they were going for like... <laughs> It's very possible knowing Nintendo, because like yeah. pretty much all of their games are just a product of, hey, can we make this work? Yeah. It worked. Let's turn it into a video game. Because mm. I know that's like, and this is really great. This is how like Mario 64 basically came to be. Yeah. It was just like them seeing like, can Mario do this? Yeah. Cool. Can Mario do that? Cool. Oh, yeah. And it just built levels around that, mm -hmm. which that's I think is good game design. Because I know Sonic the Hedgehog, especially like. With Sonic Forces, it's on paper, and then they try to do what they can, and if they don't quite get it right, oh well. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's restricted by higher powers, so they can only get so much. But yeah. I know, I know. Like, Sega's so kind of in a tough spot right now. Yeah. What else was I thinking? I was looking at the development of Sonic Forces, and uh, I could be wrong, Blair, you can put it on screen. But I think they said it took them four years to make the game. Hmm. And they had like 80 people on their staff. Yeah. And then I was curious, so I was looking into the development of the other games, and Sonic Adventure really surprised me. Yeah. That the game was developed in like 10 months by 16 people. Yeah. From the ground up. Wow. Like, holy crap. Yeah. These guys are probably dead from like <laughs> working too much. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting the right, just the right combination. 
Yeah, and that's what I liked about Sonic Adventure versus Sonic Forces. I feel like Sonic Forces is kind of a product of, we think this is cool. Yeah. Where Sonic Adventure was more wholesome and the sort of like, this is cool. Yeah. We tell you what's cool. Yeah. I think they're at least doing a pretty good job nowadays trying to figure out what people are looking for and they're trying new things. Yeah. So I'm hoping it's just a matter of time until they get it just right, right? So. But, you know, as, as uh, weird as it might even seem, I think Sonic the Hedgehog is kind of at his best when he's like, Whoa! Totally Twinkler, <laughs> dude! Yeah. Not so much like, oh, he's been tortured for six months, but, you yeah. know, the second he's out of prison, he's cracking puns. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, that doesn't seem like a guy who's been tortured for six months. The story's trying to present itself very seriously when nobody in the story seems to give a rat's ass. Yeah. Or nothing happens. People just tell me things are happening. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> Star Fox. Star Fox. Again, Star Fox, I feel, in a similar kind of sense, it, it, it's best when it's campy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it doesn't seem there's any way for me to reboot this without displaying the menus, and I don't want to do that. So, we're going to bust a nut. 